Hello everyone, it's DuckFerry07 and today we are playing Timur Prowess. Okay, so Timur Prowess got a new card, the Lucy Water. It's a one mana Prowess creature that also has adventure ability on it, but it's not really that significant. You really just want the other part, the one mana Prowess guy, that also has uh, some ability uh, creature with power uh, less than, uh, than its power can block it. Okay, so uh, this guy has done really good and people have been skeptical about how he's doing against Bowmasters. I'm here to tell you that the card is really good and it's not that hard to play around Bowmasters with this deck. You also have 4 Lava Darts, 4 Lightning Bolts, 4 Lightning Bolt in the main as a solution for uh, Bowmaster and uh, you can really efficiently just get it off the table and uh, save your uh, elusive water in most situations. Okay, also on the sideboard, additional removal, some counters, and some. Uh, these two cards are your only solution to the Chalice of the Void. One Tear Asunder, one Explosives, also Spell Pierce. And uh, yeah, okay, so Graveyard Hate, Burn Hate, uh, Creature Hate, Cascade Hate, and the Gigant, of course. But we have another new card in the main, Questing Druid. I have been trying to put the second copy of this card in the main. I had a feeling in the beginning that this is going to be a great card for the Pro's builds, and the card is really, really good, but uh, I'm uh, after some gameplay, after some uh, testing, I'm of opinion that uh, you want like two copies of this card, but uh, I haven't been able to fit in the second copy at the moment. Uh, I really want four of uh, all these cards, I really want three mutagenic growths, uh, three underworld breaches. I play uh, play Prowess a lot. I really like the archetype, but uh, so I'm kind of used to these numbers. I always play three mutagenic growths. Always play uh, three breaches for last few years, and uh, yeah, so I'm really used to these numbers, and it really just didn't didn't find the space to. Uh, Put in the second one, but uh, I, the card has been good and you will see it immediately in the league uh, in the first match. Okay, so uh, I have played uh, two good leagues with it. Both ended up 4-1 uh, and we will check out one of those. Okay, uh, my mulligan this one lander kept two pretty good cards. Um, Mulligan's the other because I had plenty of 1-drops and it is kind of a uh, weakest 1-drop from these guys but uh, still uh, that card is pretty good uh, because uh, yeah, you really just want to have these 1 mana prowess creatures that's, and the channeler of course but uh, that is kind of the point of this deck just playing this 1 mana prowess guys and try to be as, as aggressive as possible and um, I'm really liking it just uh, mostly because uh, of its mana cost. I don't really care much about its uh, adventure ability. But uh, a mana cost of uh, just one. Uh, one mana you can play it, uh, you can play it two, two, uh, two of creatures on a turn two. That's just really good in a lot of situations. And here it is on the first match you can immediately see the questing druid. I played it Seek the Beast ability, Adventure ability, Exiling, Preordain and Mutagenic Growth. This was so great and uh, now you can see like uh, what are, what was my thought uh, about this card. Uh, you do the Reckless Impulse thing, immediately uh, get the value. Uh, cast two spells, grow your Prowess creatures and you still have this amazing threat uh, you can play on your next turn and almost all spells in the deck grow him. So whatever you play, this guy gets a plus one counter. And it's also a reckless impulse. It's pretty, pretty good. If this was a Bowmasters deck, I wouldn't play it like this. I would uh, not play the other without leaving a mana open to protect it against Bowmasters, obviously. Uh, here I suffered the uh, Supreme Verdict, solid, first Solitude Pitch Cast, then Supreme Verdict, and then again another Solitude Pitch Cast to kill uh, all of my threats. But uh, my hand was good, I had plenty of those, and uh, opponent passed the turn. And they play Subtlety on my Swiss Spear. Uh, this was fine. I decided uh, to go for the Soul Scar, leave, this, uh, leave the Monastery on the top. And then next turn, just uh, attack with the lava dart back up. 
I wanted to get uh, most value out of the breach, so I decided to this turn just go for the Lavatar to ping the subtlety, make it 2 2 and kill it, uh, save uh, my guy. But they had uh, dress down, so my creature lost the ability and I had to trade with the subtlety, which was fine, I still killed it and th that was okay. So, opponent uh, cycles the Lorian and uh, just passes the turn. So, I went for the breach, they tried to dig with the memory deluge. Uh, but didn't find the counter spell they wanted, so uh, I was able to uh, play uh, play the monastery spear. Then uh, lava dart uh, flashback play lava dart for its flashback cost. Uh, mutagenic growth twice for the lethal on the same turn, and opponent concedes. That's it. Okay, opponent also conceded the entire match. Um, they said like they forgot to put their sideboard or something uh, but yeah okay they conceded the entire match and uh, we are now we can now go to the match 2 okay in the match 2 I would say pretty good hand turn 1 Seaspear, turn 2 Seaspear preordain it's basically ideal but opponent goes turn 1 scam fury this is pretty scary okay so I go um, I go Seaspear, pump Seaspear, attack Try to find some solutions. I get the bolt from the bubble. Uh, then uh, I start turn with the preordain and trying to find another burn spell. And I did find a lava dart. I decided to I decide to go for it uh, immediately on my turn. Just pump the sea spear. Um, make my uh, sea spear a four fire this way. Uh, even if uh, they. Uh, Play Undying on Fury, they still can kill my Seaspear. So I put them on a 9 life and uh, yeah, we were now both in a top deck mode. But my deck is probably slightly better in this phase in the top deck mode, especially since I find the Seaspear immediately. Also have Giganta there. <coughs> so opponent uh, plays Fable. Uh, as a blocker, I top deck expressive iteration, find the lava dart, uh, which is, gives me immediate uh, lethal damage. I played it twice and played the prior drain, grow my spear uh, for a lethal attack, and that was it. So, survived the turn one fury, a scam, and got an easy win after that. And uh, let's check out the game two. Okay. Uh, Pretty decent keep. They're playing first, so this hand is a bit soft to the Bowmasters. Both Channeler on turn one uh, died to it, but uh, I didn't have my. Uh, I, I can see. I can also show you my sideboard. I didn't sideboard in the first match because opponent conceded the entire game immediately after game one. But here you can see that I took out my mutagenic growth. Uh, these are bad when you're uh, on the draw. Opponent is too aggressive for you to try to play this card. So I brought in some um, <clears throat> Unholy Heats instead. Okay, so uh, I played my Soul Scar, I played the Illusive Water. I just uh, wanted to try to block this Ragavan, but opponent has a Fury, a Pitch Cast, killing both of my guys and connecting again with Ragavan. Uh, they played the Sheldred, very good threat at this point. Uh, I luckily find, uh, go for the iteration. I find the heat, kill the Sheldred, but still uh, uh, Ragavan uh, stayed on the field. And uh, they find uh, my bolt from the top of the deck. And yeah, now I was forced to go on uh, one life, play the Underworld Breach, kill uh, both of their... Uh, creatures and play bubble one time to get one row at this point uh, each bolt from the opponent uh, Ragavan dash and uh, bowmaster ping was lethal but yeah, I had a pretty good uh, clock here so they need to top deck it fast so I uh, find a preordain uh, with the channeler you can of course perfect your uh, draws from the top of your deck uh, especially now I had two channelers and I was looking trying to find the lethal and I started with preordain 
and Swiss spear was enough in case they don't have a fatal push. And so uh, I went for it, uh, went lava dart phase, uh, la because of Doughty I can't flashback lava dart, but it was enough even without it, and uh, that was it, that was the game against Cam. Okay, so uh, let's check out uh, match 3. Okay, so uh, I had to mulligan at uh, that one. I uh, kept one lander with the uh, two preordains. That is, I think that is perfectly capable. I could have started with preordain, but I decided to try to be aggressive and uh, start with the soul scar mage immediately. So I was obviously hoping to find the land here. I did find it immediately. I bottomed the bolt and play uh, my bolt uh, kill this goblin guide immediately. Try to be aggressive with the soul scar. Uh, kind of, I see this matchup kind of as a race. Opponent uh, has a lava spike face and he decides to use the skewer to kill uh, my uh, soul scar. Uh, unfortunately, I played my iteration here uh, without success in finding another threat, so I just went for uh, another steam when stepped and they suspended double rift bolt, which was pretty good. And yeah, pretty big chances of me just dying next turn to this. Uh, but uh, yeah, I had to try to do my thing and uh, also uh, provide uh, the lethal damage for the next turn. So in case my opponent fails or whatever, I get to make sure I have uh, I, <clears throat> I have lethal next turn. So opponent resolves both of their rift bolts and have uh, another burn spell to finish me. So that was it. Okay, let's check out the game two. Okay, so um, against Burn, always a pretty tense games, close games. I had to mulligan uh, to far, pretty low mulligan. Also, uh, I had to mulligan that six cards when I had the Dragon Claw. Unfortunately, it was a one lander, too risky to keep. And uh, I, I decided to keep five. It was decent five. Fluster, Heat, and the Creature. Uh, it is pretty good, so I decided to uh, fetch before the ability here and use the Unholy Heat on uh, one of the guides, take 2 damage. My opponent uh, has the bolt, I find the soul scar, play the fetch to fetch a tap land and hold the fluster storm. They didn't want to attack into my uh, soul scar with the guide. <clears throat> This time I decided not to bolt the guide immediately for uh, damage more, but to try to wait for the uh, uh, wait for them to attack, so I get the goblin uh, guide ability. See maybe if uh, land is on top. That could be like crucial. So I was able to <coughs> use that Flaster Storm, uh, kill the guide, and uh, start attacking for 2 damage here. My opponent was kind of uh, stuck on lands, only had 2 of them. <coughs> and yeah, they were already on 7, and uh, they had to use the Fiery Islet to uh, paint themselves. And I had the uh, top deck the Flaster Storm again to counter this uh, Boros Charm, so they went for um, double burn there and I had a top deck a Dragon Claw in this situation which means they can't use the Fiery Island and uh, if they have the Bolt uh, I gain life before the damage happens so I survive on one life and that was the game. Okay so uh, always pretty close pretty tense games against burn and, but in third game, I had my, you can see the sideboard, of course, uh, I boarded in, uh, I boarded out uh, Mutagenic Growth, of course, and uh, one Breach, one Questing Druid. I think uh, on the draw, I had both heats in. On the play, I probably uh, removed one of those. Uh, I also had the Dragon Claws, oh, Dragon Claws are definitely the most important, Fluster Storms and uh, Spell Pierces are also just crucial in this matchup. 
I didn't have any creatures there, but I had the Dragon Claw on turn 2 and my opponent didn't have a solution for it. So I was debating uh, which creature, uh, which hate for the Sanctifier I should include in my deck. And uh, I opted for not including anything. I opted for not including anything because uh, all the options uh, to fight this card are really mediocre. And like uh, Pride Spell Bomb and the Vapor Snack, I'm not too happy about uh, those cards, playing those cards in the main. So um, I didn't want those. And my opponent happened to have three Sanctifiers, which is amazing. Can't remember ever seeing three Sanctifiers. Uh, okay, but uh, I had the Illusive Water, and the uh, Illusive Water kind of helps you against uh, Sanctifiers uh, because it is blue and it can attack into them, it can block them. And that's exactly what I did here like, play the Otter. Um, it was a pretty hard game, obviously, because my opponent had uh, three Sanctifiers, which is like. That doesn't happen uh, very often. Okay, they. Uh, I definitely gained some life with the Dragon's Claw there, and uh, opponent didn't have instant speed removal for my otter, so they decided to finish him uh, after uh, the combat, and I was able to kill one of the Sanctifiers. I played my Preordain, and I hold it, uh, attack for 2 damage and holding the Pluster Storm uh, for their turn, hoping to counter the lethal uh, damage spell. And they attack with Sanctifier, uh, they go with a 4 bolt, put me, putting me on 2 life, and they try to finish me with Skullcrack. I have the Fluster Storm and I have a lethal swing back. And that was the game against the Burn. So they succeeded to win against uh, 3 Sanctifiers without any Sanctifier hate. That's, that's like pretty amazing. Okay, so let's go to the next game, next match. Uh, I'm still not sure about Sanctifier Heat on sideboard. Maybe uh, it could be Sanctifier could be a bit trickier in the Hammer Time matchup, but probably for the Hammer Time matchup, the best uh, the best hit for it is uh, Engineered Explosives. So if I would change something, I would probably uh, to fight Sanctifier. I would probably just add the second uh, uh, second explosive to the side, and that's basically it. Okay. Um, I was on turn 2, but my channelers were already 3-3, so I decided to just play both of my creatures, uh, pass the turn, and the opponent is already on 15, I have Lava Dart in my hand, if I get another spell, this is like, this can be really close to the lethal, I uh, play this on upkeep, find the expressive iteration on top and decide to play this card immediately, and try to, uh, like, swing for as much damage as I can. I got two Surveil abilities, uh, put a Breach in my hand and exile this uh, land which was useless anyway, opponent plays Fatal Push, Cling to Dust, so they kill one of my guys, uh, but uh, now, I had, uh, now I had Breach and they only have I think Cling to Dust, so they can't do much about this and I play a uh, Swiss Spear plus a Breach, I have a uh, Mishra Bubble in the graveyard, they can't play the Cling to Dust to remove it, and uh, yeah, that is the lethal damage, so opponent concedes. Turn 4 kill. I really love this kind of uh, breach uh, uh, kills. And it's even uh, easier now, since you have like uh, 12 of these 1-mana uh, prowess guys. So this happens uh, much uh, more often. And yeah, uh, so it was uh, mono black. Uh, I think this should be a pretty good matchup. Uh, I really wanted to get Delirium as soon as possible here, and I got it immediately on turn 1, which is pretty cool. This doesn't happen too often, but even if they have the Bowmasters, I have the Delirium on turn 1. Okay, and I go here for a double bubble to crack them. I should have cracked this sooner, probably if they have like Bowmasters, but it was fine. Okay, so um, I played the Otter and uh, passed the turn, holding two Pierces uh, for their turn. 
opponent goes, uh, just plays the land and passes the turn. Didn't want to crack uh, spell pierce. Uh, didn't want to crack fetch, but opponent uh, suspends another profane tutor. So uh, I wanted to uh, I top decked again my one of cresting druid, but I wanted to kind of uh, hold uh, you, you. What you usually do is hold this ability and play the seek the beast on opponent's turn. So because then uh, the card will get exiled uh, at end of your turn. So it's much more ideal use of this card. Okay, so opponent tries to hard card the ley line. I have the spell pierce there. So I had to use the spell pierce. So I wasn't able to play the seek the beast. But uh, this is how you usually play this card. You play it uh, end of your opponent's turn. Exile two cards. Then you can play this as a creature. Immediately play those cards. Uh, put some counters on the druid. And again... Uh, Again, I decided just to hold the spell pierces, expecting for my opponent to get some removal there. And they went for Damnation, but they had another pierce, which was great for me. So uh, I did the survey, some surveilling, and uh, I decided to go for the Lava Dart, I think, to do another survey. <clears throat> just to putting uh, the top of my library and uh, I uh, decide to keep elusive, another elusive water on top now I play uh, my uh, uh, what is it called yeah I seek the seek the beast ability I exile two cards I get mutagenic growth and bubble this is pretty good this uh, this creature questing beast has been just so good Every time I draw it, this is, this is why I was saying that I would like to add a second copy of this card because it, it has been just so good every time I played it. I'm, I was really impressed with it. Uh, I started off with uh, more copies of this card, but then uh, Lucy Water was also very good, so I wanted four of those two. And yeah, again, settled for one off, but it has been ex extremely, extremely good. I really, really like it. Okay, so uh, I went for a Questing Druid, cast the Channeler, I make Druid at 2-2, two, two. Uh, just attack for 3, put them on 4 life, and I have double Channeler, they are on 4 life with 1 card in hand. So chances definitely on my side in a situation like this. Opponent untaps, draws a card, and concedes the game. That's it. Okay, so that was all the wins. And we are now going to go uh, watch the trophy match. Uh, it was the only loss in this league, and see how that went. Ah, uh, yeah, it was uh, it was hammer time matchup, and uh, it, it wasn't the deck's fault. I, I had to misplay. I had a misplay and uh, it was the reason I lost. Uh, well, this uh, hammer time is really uh, can punish you often. You just uh, do slight misplays and it just uh, you get huge punishment. Okay, opponent, uh, yeah, decided uh, are you going to risk it and not hold uh, not hold the bolt, and I was immediately punished. This was this was my first misplay in this match. I could have prevented this. I could have just killed uh, the Sentinel in response to the Paladin cast. Uh, they wouldn't have uh, three uh, artifacts to use the hammer ab ability. They wouldn't have the metal craft. And I would probably be able to dig something on my turn. I had the darts, I had the bolts, and yeah. So, but still, I was in the game. It's not, uh, it's not weird to play uh, this kind of games against uh, as per, uh, against the hammer time. So, what you do is like attack with some of your creatures, with most of them, uh, and leave a few of them uh, in the block.
I let them draw a card and pay the tax and yeah this was my second misplay I, I thought I had the stop in my upkeep but I, uh, I accidentally removed it and I went to my main phase immediately it was more of a misclick than a misplay and if I played the lava dart uh, in my upkeep I would find uh, the I would find the breach on top of my library which would enable me like maybe it would be a completely different game uh, so it was really really close our opponent now had the pierce I'm not sure if if they had this uh, on their last turn uh, but uh, definitely definitely uh, I, I was able to do a bunch of uh, Mishra Bubble abilities here. Yeah, and uh, due to the spell peers, uh, I should have gone for a Mutagenic in response to maybe find another Lava Dart, put it into the graveyard, but I was, I was already annoyed of uh, the misplay. And yeah, so really close game. And I lost this due to the misplay, and I could have. This could have been an easy trophy. And yeah, uh, next game opponent just had perfect hand. Uh, I decided to start with the bubble first to see the top of my library, and then uh, go for the Swiss spear and the second bubble. I decided I don't want to fetch. Uh, I decided I want to keep the channel on top. So opponent starts with Sigada's aid, and yeah, this time uh, I decide not to uh, play my <clears throat> not to play my second uh, cre uh, Provost creature, and but to hold the lava dart. And this time I think it ended up not being a good decision. If I if I played this uh, guy a turn before, I would be in a much better situation. Opponent uh, opponent goes for the Espel Sentinel and obviously they have something good. Uh, they go for the Hammer, I have to go for the Lava Dart in response. I pay the tax, and, but they have another Hammer which means the Sentinel is now 20-20. And yeah, I'm again in a pretty bad situation. This is still uh, winnable. I just need to get some something good like iteration or uh, underworld breach would be cards I need at this point. Okay, I put the explosives on top of my library. Explosives uh, can uh, give me another turn maybe, but I don't have high chances at this point. I have some chances though. Opponent goes with Saga, plays the third hammer. Well, third hammer at this point doesn't matter. I mean, it matters, but it's not. Uh, I can still, uh, I can still have some chances. I need the same cards to top deck and win. Uh, you already saw I had explosives on top of my library, so. My opponent also has the spell peers. Uh, so this means I get to attack with the channeler. I block the bigger uh, creature and uh, le uh, let the t uh, 12, uh, 12 damage through. But opponent uh, top decks Stoneforge Mystic for a uh, little damage uh, this same turn, and that's it. Okay, uh, that was the entire league, and uh, yeah, so definitely had the opportunity there to win on in the first match against Hammer but had the two uh, one bad uh, misplay and one misclick and uh, yeah both of them led to me losing that trophy and but uh, the, the deck was very good through entire league played against various matchups and it was just I was really happy with it as I said this questing druid I had a big hopes for this guy in the progress and it is really good, uh, but I think you don't want it like uh, more than uh, two copies. I think two copies would be great. I still haven't settled what to remove for the second copy. But 
maybe just one off is also fine and uh, but the card has re i really have been impressed with both of these cards elusive water is like the weakest of the prowess creatures but it doesn't matter because it's still one mana a prowess creature and that's like the the most important thing in this situation i didn't uh i played a, a other league and in that league I had more Bowmasters matchup and I have, I've been just able to constantly hold the Mutagenic Growth, a Lava Dart or whatever to just protect it and then I had multiple options to kill uh, Bowmasters easily and it has never been a big problem uh, so far. Okay, that is it. Um, so uh, I give you the news that uh, Otter is good, Questing Druid is also good and it's playable in the Proves type of deck. I really like this uh, Tamur shell. Uh, I also really like these uh, three cards on the sideboard. They have been very useful. Uh, I'm still debating between two states and one Asunder and two Asunders and one state. If I'm expecting like more Chalice, to the, or Chalice of the Void, I would probably go with two Tear Asunder. Tear Asunder is also great against uh, One Ring. Okay, and um, explosives uh, at this point and uh, Tira Sunder are your only options uh, against uh, Sanctifier and Vec in the Hammer Time matchup. And uh, that is it. Uh, I I think I think I like uh, this uh, 75 uh, so far, and uh, that is my choice at the moment for this Provost list. Okay, that is it uh, for now. Thank you for watching. And just a friendly reminder to uh, click like, click subscribe, comment in the video, uh, tell me about your experiences with the Questing Druid, what would you remove for the second copy, and how did this deck perform if you tried it, and uh, also if you have, uh, if you feel like I missed something really important uh, on the sideboard. And uh, that's it. Okay. Uh, thanks again for the watching. That's it for today and goodbye.